Jeffrey Epstein's calendar shows he had meetings scheduled with some pretty important people, including the Biden administration's director of the CIA, William Burns. The Wall Street Journal has the exclusive on this. They reviewed the new documents and they tell us that Epstein's private calendar reveals prominent names, including the CIA chief, the current CIA chief, along with Goldman's top lawyer. They came from schedules and emails and the article tells us the following. The nation's spy chief, a longtime college president, and top women in finance. What do they have in common? Well, the circle of people associated with Epstein years after he was convicted, after the conviction, some people are saying, well, so what if they hung out with him? You know, they don't know him from anybody. No, he had already been convicted for crimes involving underage individuals. Wider than previously reported, a trove of documents includes Epstein's schedules reviewed by the Wall Street Journal. We already talked about William Burns. He is the director of the CIA. Since 2021, he had three meetings, three of them scheduled with Epstein in 2014. Then he was the deputy secretary of state. They first met in Washington and then Burns visited Epstein's townhouse in Manhattan. We talked a lot about the various properties that Epstein had when we covered the Galen trial. And we saw the interiors of a lot of these different properties. And they had some, well, we'll just call it unique decoration. So unique, in fact, that many of the artwork, many of the paintings were redacted from the jurors in the Galen trial. So the question is, what did William Burns see? Did he get a tour of the properties when he went to visit? Now, this is curious because a little bit more about William Burns an American diplomat, they call him, serving as the director of the CIA since 2021, previously served as the deputy secretary of state from 2011 to 2014. And you remember, we've talked about another secretary of state here called Anthony Blinken, who also worked with Biden and was responsible for a lot of nefariousness in the United States government. And so he was in that same institution, in that same agency around the same time. In 2009, acting Secretary of State before the Senate confirmation of Hillary, retired from foreign service after a 32-year diplomatic career. Previously served as ambassador in 2021, Biden nominated Burns to become the director of the CIA. And there's an interesting pattern here in that Biden seemingly likes to promote people who are very useful to him. Remember, Jake Sullivan got a nice promotion to national security advisor. We also have Anthony Blinken, who was in my opinion, highly involved in the creation of the Hunter Biden laptop cover-up letter. He got promoted to Secretary of State. This guy got promoted to CIA director. That's a pretty important position. He was unanimously confirmed, sworn in officially 2021, sworn in by Kamala Harris in March. William Burns was one of the people involved. Catherine Rummler was a White House counsel under Barack Obama, had dozens of meetings with Epstein in the years after her White House service and before she became a top lawyer at Goldman Sachs. Dozens of meetings. Lawyer under Barack Obama, which is the same thing that William Burns was. William Burns was working in that same institution in the close proximity to Obama administration. Catherine also planned to join Epstein in a 2015 trip to Paris and a 2017 visit to Epstein's private island in the Caribbean. Oh, man. Leon Botstein, president of Bard College, also invited Epstein, who brought a young group of female guests to campus. Hmm. Noam Chomsky, a professor, author, and political activist, was scheduled to fly with Epstein to have dinner at the townhouse in 2015. Now, none of their names appear in the black book, the contacts. The documents show Epstein arranged multiple meetings with each of them after he had already served jail time for his crimes involving teenage girls in 2000. In that era, Wall Street Journal reviewed documents which includes thousands of pages of emails and schedules all from 2013 to 2017 have not been previously reported. Now, the documents don't reveal the purpose of most of the meetings. Pfft, I wonder, because they, it's hard to put that in your calendar invite. Meeting with Jeff, Jeffrey Epstein for whatever. The Wall Street Journal couldn't verify whether every scheduled meeting took place. It's just a calendar, so you know that it's on the schedule, but you don't know whether it actually was completed. 
Most of the people who the journal contacted said they visited Epstein for reasons related to his wealth and connections. Hmm. Several said they thought he had served his time and rehabilitated himself. Mr. Botstein said he was trying to get Epstein to donate to his school. Chomsky said that he and Epstein discussed political and academic topics. Mm -hmm. Burns met with Epstein about a decade ago as he was pre preparing to leave government service. That came from a CIA spokesperson called Tammy Cooperman Thorpe. She said, quote, the director did not know anything about him other than that he was introduced as an expert in the financial services sector and offered general advice on the transition to the private sector. They had no relationship. That's pretty amazing. So the CIA and the State Department and somebody who's going to be leading the CIA had no knowledge about who this person was. He's just an expert in financial services and general advice. They had no relationship. That's curious. So I wonder if I could just call up the CIA director and just say, hey, you know what? I'm a lawyer. I've got general legal advice for you on pending criminal investigations that might be coming your way. Do you think I'd get a phone call? They had no relationship. Somebody sends him a text. Hey, I heard you're leaving the government. Want to just chat? Oh, it's Jeffrey Epstein. Well, yeah, sure. I don't know anything about the guy. Never heard of him. Only been a nationally renowned criminal defendant for the entire country. No, no idea who it is, but might have some good advice. So let's meet. Miss Rumler had a professional relationship with Epstein in connection with her role at a law firm called Latham & Watkins. You remember that law firm? Oh, yeah, we talked a lot about those guys. A Goldman Sachs spokesman said Epstein introduced her to potential legal clients like Bill Gates. And Bill Gates, the spokesman said, I regret ever knowing Jeffrey Epstein, Miss Rumler said. A lot of people regret it. Spokesman from Lathan and Watkins said Epstein wasn't a client. 2006, we know that Epstein was accused and pleaded guilty, and he had the most insane plea deal that you've ever seen. Epstein's plea deal basically immunized him against further crimes, and in my opinion, it also immunized people like Galen Maxwell. Epstein, but that obviously was not agreed upon by the court. She got charged separately. Epstein's case generated waves of media coverage. Publications reported about it. Biggest known client was a billionaire called Les Wexner. His bank, J.P. Morgan, later said it closed his accounts in 2013. 13? Whoa, 13? Excuse me. Though some bankers continued to meet with him for years after. Here's the <laughs> interior of his residence. This, I believe, is the Manhattan home. Government exhibit 911. You see the inside of that strange deformed alien figure up there over the fireplace. Virginia Gouffre also sued. Prosecutors alleged all sorts of horrendous activities. But the question is, what are all these powerful people doing in close proximity? A lunch was planned with Mr. Burns. He's 67, a career diplomat, former ambassador to Russia. This is the director of the CIA. Met with Epstein when Burns was deputy secretary of state. A lunch was planned at the office of the law firm Steptoe & Johnson in Washington. Epstein scheduled two evening appointments that September with Mr. Burns at his townhouse. After one of the scheduled meetings, Epstein planned for his driver to take Mr. Burns to the airport. CIA director recalls being introduced in Washington. Said, we met briefly in New York. The director does not recall any further contact, including receiving a ride to the airport. Isn't that nice? These guys are super smart. They're in charge of everything. They just have a hard time remembering things. The following month in October, Burns stepped down from his role at the State Department to serve as the president of Carnegie Endowment. He ran that until reselected to be the CIA. Taking a little hiatus. Wonder what that was about. The documents show that Epstein appeared to know some of his guests well. He asked for avocado sushi rolls when Miss Rumler appeared. He visited the apartment she was considering buying. He was studying these people. In 2014, Epstein knew her travel plans and told an assistant to look into her flight. See if there's a first class seat. And if so, upgrade her. In 2014, Epstein called Rumler within weeks of her leaving the Obama White House, planned a lunch in 2014 in his townhouse, followed by a series of meetings to introduce her to a wider circle of acquaintances. So people go into the government, 
He just waits around, pulls them out of the government, and uses them. Miss Rumler first met Epstein after she called her to ask if she would be after he called her to see if she would be interested in representing Gates and Bill in the Melinda Gates Foundation. A spokesman for Gates said Epstein never worked for Gates, misrepresented their relationship, and said that Mr. Gates regrets ever meeting him. But Epstein and his staff discussed whether Rumler, now 52, would be uncomfortable with the presence of young women who worked as assistants. Women emailed Epstein on two occasions to ask if they should avoid the home while Miss Rumler was there. Epstein told one of the women he didn't want her around and another that it wasn't a problem. When Miss Rumler went there, she didn't see anything that would lead her to be concerned. Of course not. Several people who visited Epstein during the time said they noticed young women there. One of the visitors, Helen Fisher, was an anthropologist, had lunch to discuss her work. <laughs> Right. Dr. Fisher said after the lunch, Epstein invited her to speak with the staff. And then in filed, I would say, I don't know, then in filed, I would say six young women, all of them good looking, all of them young. Ugh. Dr. Fisher said Epstein never funded her work. They weren't friends. I didn't have anything to do with him, but I remembered it because of his spectacular house and because of the six young women. Miss Rumler, then a partner specializing in white collar defense at Latham and Watkins. More than three dozen appointments, normal meetings, the kind of contacts that you normally engage with with clients. She was scheduled to fly to the island, but she never visited, never accepted the invite. Epstein also connected Miss Rumler with Ariana de Rothschild, who is now the chief executive of the Swiss private bank, Edmund de Rothschild Group. The bank hired Miss Rumler's law firm, Latham & Watkins, after the introduction to help U.S. regulatory matters. Mrs. de Rothschild, who married into the famous banking family, had more than a dozen meetings with Epstein. Sought her help with staffing, furnishings, business deals. Needed a new assistant, female, multilingual, organized. Miss Rothschild said, I'll look around for you. She bought nearly $1 million worth, $1 million worth of auction items from an Epstein auction. In 2019, after Epstein was arrested, the bank said Miss de Rothschild never met with him. Oh, that's not true. Miss Rothschild was named as the chairwoman. She and Epstein negotiated a $25 million contract for the use of Epstein's Southern Trust Co. for risk analysis and the application and the use of certain algorithms for the bank. Oh my gosh. Certain algorithms. Well, risk analysis, 25 million, sounds good. We never met. Epstein solicited her personally on a couple occasions for advice. Yes, you did. Miss Rothschild had no knowledge of any legal proceedings, they say. I, we're unaware of everything and we feel and support the victims. Also met with Mr. Ramo, who served on the board of Starbucks, this guy. Met with him in the evenings. Also invited to breakfast at the townhouse. He still sits on the board of FedEx. Recently stepped down from Starbucks. Didn't respond to comments. Also met with Noam Chomsky, big name, 94, linguistics professor, political activist. Chomsky said Epstein arranged the meeting with Mr. Barack for them to discuss Israel's policies with regard to Palestinian issues and the international arena. Epstein arranged several meetings with Chomsky while he was a professor at MIT. When the Wall Street Journal asked him about this, Chomsky replied in an email. He said, well, the first response is that it's none of your business. Don't ask me about my relationship with him or anyone's. The second is that, yeah, I knew him and we met occasionally. Epstein scheduled a gathering with Mr. Chomsky and Harvard professors. Great. According to documents, several meetings. Two months later, Epstein planned to fly with Chomsky and his wife to have dinner with them and movie director Woody Allen. Chomsky says, well, if there was a flight, I doubt it. It would have been from Boston to New York, 30 minutes. I'm unaware of the general principle that requires I inform you about an evening I spent with a great artist. Ooh, Chomsky is pissed, man, in his emails. Man, he is not happy. Epstein donated at least $850,000 to MIT, $9 million to Harvard. Chomsky said that he considered that, that people he considered worse than Epstein had donated to MIT. He didn't mention any of his meetings. Chomsky told the journal that at the time of his meeting, what was known about Epstein was that he had been convicted of a crime and served his, sent his sentence, and that yields a clean slate. If you, if you feel like his penalty was just, 
It requires justice. He got a sweetheart plea deal that was insane. That was basically nothing we had ever seen before. MIT said lawyers investigating its ties to Epstein didn't find that Chomsky met with Epstein on its campus or received funding. Harvard refused to comment. Another Bard College and music director named Mr. Botstein also met with him. Said, I found, I found him odd and arrogant. And what I finally came to believe is that he was simply stringing us along. They never got any more money. So they stopped meeting with Epstein. What an article. So a lot of powerful people wrapped up with Jeffrey Epstein. You see some of them here. Noam Chomsky's on the list. CIA director William Burns. Other powerful people. Goldman lawyers. Rothschild families who control banking monies all around the globe. And the relationships run deep, but the criminal investigations don't. The criminal prosecutions, pretty much done. Glenn Maxwell got the brunt of that. Everybody else who was involved, all the clients, all the people who use the services, still out there. 